Hi guys and welcome back to another video and today we are with the Mercedes S-Class. Now this is probably the first time you're seeing it on my channel since I obviously collected the car which is a very rushed collection because I was literally flying out to Dubai which I seem to be doing on almost every time I collect a car but anyway um, yeah so this is the first time you're properly seeing it so I'm gonna try and just kind of show you the top bits about the car the spec because it is crazy crazy spec but starting off first of all by going around the car so let's do this now what has changed actually between the 2018 which only came out like a month ago in terms of cars being delivered and the actual uh, previous s-class so apart from the key which again i'm not impressed with new keys these days very disappointing but anyway um at the front here you can see that now this front grille has changed completely so this front grille has now become basically like what the mercedes maybach would be and down at the front here they've added these kind of slits here at here at the side like this chrome slits as well as all around the front as well so that's the probably the biggest change from the s-class going around the lights as well so here you can see these kind of three led lights whereas before it was actually just one led light excuse how dirty the car is remember i have been on holidays so this car's kind of been sitting and it was not parked in the garage uh, my fault uh going around i've got the 19 inch rims on these car on this on this car and I know that's gonna be a contentious issue and somebody mentioned it, I think a few guys mentioned it from the collection video, but the reason why I've gone for the 19s is because it does make the ride smoother. Will I be changing it? Potentially. I'm gonna mix between two wheels just to see how the ride is and then I will decide myself because I do prefer the other wheels, I'm not disagreeing. The bigger wheels do look better. But for now, these are staying for now. Going around, you've got all these chrome nice bits around here. Remember in my video when I collected it, I was talking about what I could be doing to this car. And when you'll see a second in the inside properly, it's actually got like a Maybach interior as opposed to a normal S-Class interior. So one thing that's quite important here is, is that on the Maybachs, you've got these kind of chrome sections here. Will I do that? Let's talk about that in a bit. Going around the car, there's loads and loads of dirt. That did not come with it. It was nice and clean when I collected it. Um, number plate, guys, I need your help with this. So please tell me in the description below. No, not in the description, in the comments below. Tell me in the comments below what number plate I should put on this car. So from what you've seen, you know I've got a niche V, which is basically like my name, obviously, on the plate. I've also got O Lord, which you've probably seen on my Ferrari. And I've got 99 AB, which is on the Lamborghini. Which one do you think I should put on this car? I kind of like the short number plate on this car. Maybe I should take that off the Aventador and put the Anish onto another one. I don't know, tell me, which one do you think will look best on this car? This is my biggest thing that I need to change. So obviously this is an S350D. I kind of talked about why I didn't want to go for the Maybach. It was basically because it was a six liter car. Um, it was going to depreciate a lot potentially as well. So I went for the S350D, best car to be driven around with. Fuel economy is fantastic as well, but I will be debadging this and changing it to the Maybach it was supposed to be. And going around, the lights at the back are really cool as well. We'll show you that. When you kind of switch it off, they kind of go off in like tiers. So they've made that really cool. Fully tinted out the back. The rear is tinted as well. Panel roof will show you from the inside, but otherwise, that's pretty much it from the outside. Now, you're probably wondering, Anish, why are you filming this video when it's like kind of dark outside and you could have filmed it during the day? There is a reason. I've saved it for the night time, and that's because of the interior, which I really want to show you. So let's go for a little bit of drive, talk about the car, and then show you all the fun gadgets. Let's do it. So we're inside, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite part of the car. I can show you around the outside more, um, but you'll see it in more Instagram pictures. Remember, follow me here on Instagram. But I wanted to show you the inside of this car as the night kind of starts setting. So we've still got a bit of daylight. As this video goes on, you're gonna see the light disappear completely and the inside of this car just completely comes alive. First things first, interior is porcelain black. So porcelain black meaning this kind of white -ish leather and um, it's kind of like being contrasted off with the black that goes around here and everywhere. Reason being why? Because if you go on these black bits here and people keep touching it, this is gonna get super, super dirty. Whereas the seats should stay pretty clean, hopefully, as long as some of my weird friends don't get in the car. Now, um, massive updates in the interior here from the previous S-Class and mainly because it's like, the whole interior itself in terms of the screens, the tech that's in here, how the actual steering wheel is and everything. So starting off with the steering wheel, it's got these kind of like touchpad functions now. So you've got these things here, which I think I mentioned before, which is kind of like the, the old Blackberry keypads, which is really cool, but you can scroll over them and do lots of things here on the screen. So for example, if I go onto the middle of bit of the screen here and I'm kind of like scrolling through, not only can you just scroll through lots of things there, but you can also change the whole right side dial to choose locations. Um, you can even go onto a G-force meter as well. So that's pretty cool. 
Now that controls the right-hand screen, and the left one controls the left-hand screen. Now there's so many functions here. So Blue, if you focus on the screen for a second, check this out. So I can go on, this is one of the many, many, many functions. But if I go to passenger, I can actually go on to massage here. So on Blue side, there's gonna be something here called a hot relaxing massage. So basically what a hot relaxing massage is, is it's a hot stone massage. It's not like a normal massage. It will actually push warm, kind of what a hot stone massage will feel like in whatever parts of the preset function that you want it. But in this one, it's got it done. So the hot stone relaxing massage, if you select that, it kind of plays it. And then immediately, Blue's gonna start feeling on his side where he's gonna start feeling heat and start feeling all these things. And can you not, because I know this car's really comfy, but could yeah, just focus. So he's gonna start feeling this kind of hot stone massage and everything. Blue, mate, wake up. So it's really, really, really comfy, which I'm trying to get across to you as well. So this is not gonna work if you keep, can we switch the massage off, please? Okay, the massage oh, is off. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. massage is off now. It is super, super comfy, honestly. Um, um, I just sometimes sit in here by myself and get a massage. But yeah, the front of this car has so much tech. Everything here from the middle co console over here, we've got everything from like wireless charging in this center here. It's gonna open both ways as well, which is pretty cool. When we're driving, I'm gonna show you something pretty cool as well because this car actually drives itself. And when I mean drives itself, I mean Tesla kind of level, it drives itself. Um, we're gonna show you some cool features, features as well, which is you can use the app to drive the car. The car parks itself, which I know has been done in cars before as well, but you can actually park the car with the phone app as well. So, you know what? Before we do anything, should we move the car with the phone? Let's do yeah. that. Let's do that. Okay, cool. So, how do you move the car without anybody in there? Just to prove, Blue, can you please show there's nobody in the car? There is nobody in the car. Nobody in there. Happy with it? And yep. all you do is, have a look at this. You press the unlock button, but make sure that at the same time, you've got the parking app open on the phone. So you'll see that load, and what you do is you unlock the car. As soon as you kind of unlock it, it picks up the car right here. So you say, select this vehicle. Now it's kind of syncing itself with the car. Now the lights on show there's definitely nobody in the car. Okay, now let's step back for a minute. You just have to make sure you've got the key near with you and you say, which way do you want the car to move? So let's say we want the car to move forward. To start the procedure, you switch on the car. So you go around like this. The car is now gonna switch on. Now the car's switching on, in order to do the maneuver, all you do is circle like this and the car will magically start moving forward. Now it's gonna start doing it with like kind of a reaction and it will not hit into anything. So I'm standing here, it will not hit into me. See, it stopped, right? But if I move out of the way, it's telling you there's a hazard. If I move out of the way, the car will continue. So I can say here, continue, and get the car to continuously move. See, so it's just being safe, making sure that nothing's happening. It's not gonna hit anything, but the car can actually move. So the cool thing about that car is, is you can imagine that if I'm kind of standing over there and I'm waiting for the car and I'm like, you know what, I can't be bothered to walk to it. All I do is just do this, I can summon the car towards me. Tell me that's not cool. Now the other thing about that is, it's not just you can move the car back and forward because that would be kind of pointless. What you're doing is when you get in the car, the car is constantly scanning parking bays and where there's availability to park. Once you kind of identified one, which it does all the time, you select it and select the phone function, put the car into park, get out of the car, walk away, and do this exact same thing and the car will park itself. It will continue the maneuver. Parallel parking, bay parking, all sorts. It's honestly, the tech is crazy. Right, back in, because it's freezing. So as most of you know, I'm not actually gonna be driving this car a lot. I have mentioned it in the last video and also on Instagram. Thankfully, a lot of you applied, so I really appreciate that. And I now have essentially three kind of part-time drivers who will jump in and out the car at different times. So I'm not gonna be spending a lot of time driving this car. That doesn't mean that I won't be driving it because honestly, it's so nice to drive. I can't tell you about how good the ride is because it is just pure cushioned comfort. We are on a very, very bumpy road right now and the car's just kind of taking it. Now, this car, while I'm driving, is doing a million things. It is scanning the road 250 meters ahead of me and it's picking about where any of the kind of bumps would be or any potholes will be and it actually adjusts it so that you don't feel it in the car. Now, I, when I say don't feel it, you will sometimes still have this kind of like, you know, where it goes through a bump, but honestly, compared to other cars, it's just, so 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 comfy one of the biggest questions I've been asked so far is Anish listen we obviously know that this car is a lot cheaper than a Rolls Royce but it kind of has the same features in terms of how it feels and its comfort so how does it feel now I've lucky enough been I've luckily enough been in a in a Rolls Royce a few times and honestly I don't find them that comfy the ride is fantastic but they're not as comfy they're the seats are kind of you know a little bit firmer and it doesn't give you that time to kind of just relax a lot of them with their seats not kind of you can't recline them and do all sorts of things but even to drive 
not that you do drive a Rolls Royce, but to drive, not the best either, because you have this massive, massive car, which to park is almost impossible, um, whether it's a Phantom, whether it's a Ghost, and really to drive is just like kind of lugging along a big car. But this, to drive, I would happily, happily get in this car. Now, some of the cool features in this, I think I mentioned before, is that it will actually drive itself. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm going at normal speed. I think the speed limit here is about 50. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press up here, which will now set the speed at 35. I'm gonna increase the speed, which is at the bottom here, saying it's 50 miles an hour. Now, as you can see here, there's a little green kind of symbol saying that the hands on the steering wheel are green. If I now let go of the car, the car is now driving itself. So as you can see, my hands are here, and the car is driving itself completely. It's keeping itself on the road. It's now adjusting to keep itself to the right. Again, my hands are here, I'm not doing anything. It will sometimes tell you, like it's there, tell me that you're on the steering wheel. I just press that button there and it continues to drive itself. So now we're going around a corner. We're going around a corner now. And there's a car coming to the right. As you can see, I am not holding the wheel and the car is driving itself completely. There you go. See, it's turning itself around. No issues whatsoever. So that's one of many cool functions and honestly it's so cool when you're on the actual motorway and you're driving. Right now I'm going to move into a lane. If I indicate to move into a lane, a lot of the times it will actually change itself. So I'm now going to pick up that I'm setting the speed at 50 miles an hour. There it is. If I want to move into that lane, I'm now indicating. The car will now move into that lane itself. I pull the indicator off and that's it. My hands are still off the wheel. I haven't done anything. Now, it will overtake, and if you want it, it will move back into that thing. Again, I'm talking to you, and I'm not steering the car. It's doing it completely itself, so this is great for YouTube vlogging because it is very, very safe. I can increase the speed if I want to here. It's picking up there's a car on the left, so it's getting a little bit close. It moves to the right. I want to move back into that lane now. So look, I'm just going to indicate. It's going to say there's a car there. It's waiting. Now the lane change is taking place. Pull the indicator off, and again, the car has driven itself completely. Now, it's a really cool function, like I said. I'm just going to cancel that. Um, you have to be safe while using this, um, but honestly, these cars are fantastic. Sometimes if it's driving like that, it's probably better than we would be driving ourselves. So yeah, my driver's gonna have pretty much an easy time because I'll be paying him to sit here. Okay, let's pull up and show you the really cool features on here, and then the best part, which is the back. Now I could carry on and bore you with all the tech that's sitting here in the front because there is endless things. There are TVs, there is everything from the massage functions that I've showed you to cooling seats, heated seats, um, full control from this side of the car, of the left side seat. I've told you about the wireless charging, um, all the different cable accesses here. Of course, the car has Apple CarPlay. You can split all the screens here and to do a million different things from sat nav to having it all kind of split up and doing different stuff. And the other things you can do is you can change the actual display here. So if we just go into this display here and I show you this, you can go in, choose a little bit of display and say, you know what? I feel like having something a little bit different. So select the menu, go to the top here and say, I want to change the display change the design and what you do is you can actually go to like sport or you can go into progressive which is the popular option here and then again you can go into the right hand side and you can change the actual display to show where it is that you are sat nav miles per gallon whatever it is and that is a pretty cool display it gives it kind of like a sporty feel as well so that's quite cool now like i said everything can be controlled from the driver side here now we've got lots of cool stuff at the back including like blinds and everything i can open and close everything from this side here and it can also do a lot of things from the driver side which can control the back part of the car here like the tvs enough of me yapping on about the front of the car and how nice it is because like i said it's an amazing place to drive the best part is the back so i think it's time to show you that Welcome to the back. Now, soft closed doors, of course. Let me put the lights on in here so you can see me a little bit better. Now, this is the back of the car, and this is where I'm gonna be spending most of my time. Now, as you can see, the front seat is now in its kind of chauffeur position. So as you can see here, look how much room I've actually got here. I can kind of sit my own self down here if I wanted to. This, funnily enough, is not as far forward as it goes. So I will show you what you do. Now, I did kind of show this in the last video, but if you hold this button down here, and then you put it into the lounge position, seat will maneuver itself and adjust itself into the optimum position for you to sit and relax. Now I'm going to take off my shoes because I should respect the car and I don't want any of the white stuff getting in its way. I know I'm not the tallest person in the world but that's not too bad. 
the leg rest is now rising. It comes out and rises. And of course, just like the Maybach, it's got a Maybach cushion here as well. So this is what's different between this S-Class and of course the other ones. And I can officially sit back and relax. And there are many, many, many more cool features because that's not where it stops. Now, this is the control. There's one on this side. And Blue, you've got one on that side over there as well. So the control itself, not only does it control the TV that's in front of you, but it also controls the center console there, as well as you can control the other TV. So on the control remote here, all you do is scroll through these different functions. Now that's the right rear, but I want to control the right left, which is the, this one here. You press on, and then there the TV screen comes on. Now this TV screen has everything like the front does. It has TVs, it's got all of that, but you have something here at the back which you can control called Energizing Comfort. Now this was one of the biggest releases when this car actually came out and one of the biggest selling points for me. It's so, so cool. When you go down here, if you check the screen, it's got something here called Energizing Comfort. You select that and once you've selected it, it's got these options. Now you've got Refresh, Vitality, Joy, Wellbeing and of course you've got something called Training. Now Training is something for the driver or if you're sitting in the back and you've been sitting for a long period of time. When you press it, it will start to tell you about how to do certain exercises like moving your shoulders, or doing different things so that you're not going to get cramps or anything like that while you're sitting in the car. But the functions that I really like is something here called like Vitality. Vitality will kind of close out the car in terms of making it a little bit darker. It will actually start massaging the seat. It will also start playing some music. Now, because I'm selecting it from the back left screen here, I've got to take out what they provide you here, which is the Sound Burmester headphones that they've got here which are wireless headphones, which you obviously put on your head like this. Um, the Burmester sound system here is an expensive option, but it's worth it because it makes a massive difference to the car. So if I put this on over here, and I sit here and I press Vitality, there's actually now music playing in my ears to help me relax. There's massaging that started on the seat. Now, I know you guys can't hear it. So what I can do is if I want to do it for the rest of the car, is I go, let me take all these stupid headphones. But if I clicked it on the command function over here, I can now control that screen over there. So if I say I want to go home, it's going to control that screen over there. And I can go across, or I can scroll like this, and I can select vehicle. See, I'm controlling that screen right now. I go down to the energizing comfort section, and then select the same option, which is here, Vitality. And I press play. Now, it's controlling the front seats, and here's the music. Now this, if you can still hear me, I'll lower it down because I can't control it from here. Music will play for about 10 minutes to help you relax. And at the same time, for everybody in the car, they're gonna get a massage, whether it's hot stone or a refreshing massage. And at the same time, it's gonna release fragrances through the car and through the ventilation system as well. So the whole car will relax. So obviously these lights will be switched off. We'll be sitting here in the dark. You can see all the mood lighting. And this is my little place of zen. So one of the biggest features for this car for me, and the reason why honestly I would pick this over something like an A8, which I did look at, um, so the Audi A8, the long wheelbase as well, and some of the other cars, the 7 Series, because some people did mention to me, why would you pick this over that? Forget about all the tech, forget about everything else. I don't care what anybody says, the level of comfort and the control of your surroundings is so much more in this car than it is on anything else. Now, the ambient lighting on this car has now completely changed. Before there used to be something like 12 colors, now they have 64. So just to give you a little bit of idea, again, I can control it from here. If I select the ambient lighting here on the screen, and I open that up, it's giving me a massive range of options. So just for the purpose of this, I know you're not gonna see me anymore, I'm gonna switch these lights off so you can't see me at all bring this down and maybe choose something like a red moon function. So if I go across here, I'm saying, okay, I'm gonna go up here to red moon, and I see that. If I select that, just watch the lights change in the car as I select it. So I'm gonna select red moon, have the multicolor effect settings, and as you can see, the lighting of the car is now starting to change. So the multicolors will like change in different colors here. So having red all over the car, or if you want, you can choose different settings like red moon, fire red, purple sky so now you can see at the front you've got kind of like a blue and red mix as i go down we've got dawn blue so dawn blue now takes over the car completely a sun yellow a jungle green or even a glacier blue now this whole change to the car if i put the light back on now so you can see me this whole change to the car is just the kind of preset colors that they've given you there's actually then a full like color array that you can choose from of all different colors and you can control whether you want more light at the back and more light at the front even more so if you've got two passengers sitting at the back, the front, wherever it might be, or even four passengers, five passengers, it doesn't make a difference. 
If one passenger is feeling a little bit cold and decides to put their temperature a little bit higher, the lighting around them will start to kind of warm to a red color to make them feel warmer. And on the left-hand side, if you want to be cooler and you put the temperature down, we'll give it a blue effect to help you cool down. Now, I honestly can continue and continue and continue with all the tech that's in here because there is full internet in the car. It has got hotspots, so you can use all your wireless devices in here at the same time. You've got full connections in here. So if you plug in your phone at the back here, like you plug in your iPhone, you can control the iPhone screen at the front as well because you've got the remotes. And like I said, you can control both screens from those remotes as well. There are some additions in here and that are different to the Maybach itself. There's a little bit of an extension. So you'd normally have about, I would say about that much more space on the Maybach itself. So maybe about kind of that more on the Maybach. Um, so not a huge difference because I don't think you need much more room. And one thing that was important to me was to make sure that I didn't have a fixed center console. So this does move up and down and um, you can have three people sitting in the back if need be. I didn't go for the fridge option, which is normally at the back over here, simply because it takes up too much space. But they do give you a little bit of space here to put in whatever you want. So and it's pretty cold as it is, because in the UK it is freezing anyway. So um, it takes up too much space if you do put anything else. I honestly, honestly love this car. We've got to talk about, it's a bit dark outside now, but we've got to talk about all the kind of things that I want to change to it. I've mentioned the Maybach stuff. You guys need to let me know in the comments as well. What should I be doing? Just to give you a little bit of a teaser, something that I was thinking of, but I haven't confirmed yet on, is maybe something like a two-tone to the outside of the car. So as you have Rolls Royces, have kind of like the front bonnet, different to the rest of the car. Maybe something like this in this car. You know I like things one-off. Plug, one-off. You know that I like things one-off and I like to do my cars a little bit different. So I want to do something with this car as well. Now, let's do some more kind of cinematic, nice shots of all the cool things in this car. And I will talk to you at the end. Another cool thing I forgot to mention actually, which is useful for the person who owns the car, the person who drives the car, whatever, is the concierge service. Now that's given in the first year for free, I believe. Otherwise it's 129 pounds after that, or like $150. And all you do is you have a little bit of button up here, which says I, and you kind of press it, it's this one over here. And when you press that button, it will access your personal concierge. So somebody will answer and say, hello, Mr. And you, whoever your name is, and will be like, how can I help you? You can book restaurants, you can book holidays, so you don't have to just do it when you're driving. You can also call them, it's in the app as well. You can um, get them to like, if you say to them, hey, I wanna know where the nearest McDonald's is, which is probably why I'll be asking them, where's the nearest McDonald's? They'll program it and then chuck it into your sat-nav so it's already in there, ready to go, amongst many, many other services as well from the concierge. So, like I said, I can call up the concierge if I can't get through to my driver. Obviously, in the app, I can actually control where I see the car. So in the app itself, it will tell me the location of the car, and if my driver's driving the car, I can set a geofencing in the area. So I can geofence where he's driving. So if he drives out of that area, I get a notification. Plus, I can send things directly to the car, like the address, and it will immediately kind of just pick it up so that he knows exactly where to pick me up from. Um, and I can set everything in the car with my own profile. So the driver has their own profile, I'll have my own profile. Whenever somebody gets into the car and you select their profile, everything's preset, ready, so that you don't have to keep changing it from when the last person was in the car. So yeah, very, very cool features. Right guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I'm honestly in love with this car. I can't keep saying it enough, but um, I mentioned it in the last video, it was a bit of a dream for me to have a car like this. And uh, thankfully as well, very blessed to be able to have somebody to drive me around and have a good time. So it means I can be more productive in the back as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys agree that I made the right decision on this car as well. If you think that I should have gone for maybe the A8, maybe should I do a video to kind of compare it and then you guys can see the actual difference. Um, that might be something worth doing next. But please, please, please remember to like this video and subscribe because like I told you, there is some crazy content coming. So you, only if you're going to be subscribed will you guys get the notifications. And that's it from me. See you in the next video. Bye. And you want me to send it right to your vehicle, sir? Yeah, if you can send the McDonald's restaurant to the navigation, please. Okay, so I just sent it to your vehicle, so you can confirm whenever you receive it. Uh, yep, so just press yes. Okay, so I can I do anything else for you? That's it, thank you very much. Thank you very much for calling, have a lovely day. Thanks. Bye.